They call it faith because in the face of darkness, you can see that brighter future. A faith that our best days lay ahead of us. But is it worth the fight? Do I have the courage? Is it worth the sacrifice? America has been worth it every single time. All right, folks, welcome back. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis releasing a new ad ahead of a major event tonight where he's expected to officially announce a run for president of the United States following months of speculation. Joining me now to discuss this and a lot more is Iowa Senator Joni Ernst. Uh, Senator, great to see you. You're hosting some of the GOP hopefuls at your annual Roast and Ride event on June 3rd. First off, has Governor DeSantis RSVP'd, and are you backing any candidate in these early stages? Well, thank you, Chris. It's great to be with you. And yes, we have our Roast and Ride coming up on June 3rd in Des Moines, Iowa. We're very excited about it. And I have invited all of our presidential hopefuls. We have a number of RSVPs, including Nikki Haley, Tim Scott, Vivek Ramaswamy, uh, Mike Pence, many, many others. And there's more to follow, Chris, so you'll have to stay tuned. You can go to roastandride.com. That's where you can get tickets and follow additional announcements in the upcoming days. And Senator, are you backing anybody at this point in the game? <laughs> nice, coming back to that. I am not um, endorsing anyone. We are the first in the nation caucus state. And so Governor Kim Reynolds, uh, Senator Chuck Grassley and I have always made this a promise that we would not endorse presidential candidates as they're coming into the state because we do want to welcome all of our GOP hopefuls. We think it's the fair and the right thing to do, but I will tell you, it is a fabulous field and Republicans are going to have a great time as they evaluate uh, how we can get our country back on track with these candidates. Well, I also wanted to talk to you about the other big story out there today, the debt ceiling talks or lack thereof. Uh, Congressman Jamie Raskin is calling on Biden to pervert the 14th Amendment to usurp the Congress on the debt limit. Watch. On the Democratic side, people understand that the 14th Amendment is not an option, as people have been saying. The 14th Amendment is an imperative. That is, it's the whole framework for analyzing the problem. And Section 4 says that the validity of the public debt shall not be questioned. Now, Senator, even Barack Obama said this is not possible to do with the 14th Amendment. So, Senator, if the Democrats brazenly usurp the House's role in the debt limit process, what will your duty compel you to do in response? Well, we absolutely will be pushing back on this. Uh, Kevin McCarthy has brought forward a solution. They passed a bill in the House that addresses the debt ceiling and reduces spending, which is absolutely necessary. Iowans who are hardworking and really watch their finances are sick and tired of supporting the Democrats' reckless spending in Washington, D.C. So we absolutely must push back against this. And I think it makes it very difficult difficult for the Democrats to negotiate through different pieces of legislation and spending in the future. I would proceed with extreme caution on this. Even Janet yes, Yellen, Senator. Secretary Janet Yellen, says no to this idea. Well, sure. And Senator, let me just ask you again, because if the Democrats decide to once again go extra constitutional, isn't it fair that Republicans exact a price for them doing so? D don't the Democrats have to pay a consequence to stop this extra constitutional, extra, extra constitutional activity they have been putting on this country for the better part, well, since, since the Obama administration? Yeah, absolutely. And I think this will bear out as we go through election cycles as well. People have a voice in this, um, which is why Republicans are pushing back, because more spending by this Democratic administration is absolutely untenable. And the people here in Iowa, uh, they are very concerned about what Democrats are doing without controlling spending. And so it is on us, so elected officials, those in the Republican Party, to push very hard back against the Democrats to mm. make sure that we can get spending under control, but then again, flip the White House here in a couple years, as well as the Senate. 
All right, before we, before we scoot, CBS is out there reporting that senators were offered satellite telephones amid growing security concerns. Well, are the security concerns, let me ask you, senators, surrounding the estimated millions of unknown illegal aliens who have been allowed to enter this country because of Democrats and Joe Biden, what can you tell us about what these phones are for? Yes, I am actually checking into this since this news came forward. And the way I understand it is in case of emergency, because we have had a number of um, extreme climate events and so forth, if we were a, uh, if we did lose connectivity, then those satellite phones could use to be uh, communication devices in case we didn't have telephones. Uh, but again, I am looking into this. I, I think it's very odd that they would offer these uh, to the senators, but it, I guess it would make sense if there were a natural disaster and, and we lost all connectivity. But more to follow on that as well, Chris. And Senator, really, I only got about 30 seconds left, but I wanted to ask you, have your constituents been concerned or expressed concern to you that Joe Biden and the Democrats have had open borders and we have almost two million known gotaways and how many of those known gotaways could be trained foreign military or terrorists that the Democrats have just allowed to traipse right into the United States? Any concern there from your constituents? Huge concern, Chris. Uh, open borders, not a good policy. And we see the level of fentanyl that is hitting our Iowa communities and killing uh, young men and women all across the state. Uh, we are concerned about what Joe Biden is not doing at the southern border. And uh, we see this every single day in the loss of life, human trafficking, sex trafficking, weapons trafficking, and going back again, fentanyl trafficking. It is devastating yep. to our communities right here in middle America. It is, and completely unnecessary and completely unlawful. Senator Joni Ernst, thank you very much for your time. We appreciate it.